in the last presentation, we w discussed how to solve uh, systems of linear ordinary differential equations. In this presentation, we're going to, for the first time, consider uh, how to analyze a nonlinear system of ordinary differential equations. And I want you to note carefully my use of language here. I say we're going to discuss how to analyze them, not how to solve them. Uh, actually, uh, you really can't, in general, uh, solve a, uh, an, a nonlinear system of differential equations. Uh, let me give you an example. And here's the example, our first example of a nonlinear system. Well, we did look at a predator prey model before. Um, this is kind of like that, where we have uh, some nonlinear terms, such as an x squared term, xy, and y squared. Um, even this constant, uh, anything that isn't an x with a coefficient or, or a y by itself with a coefficient uh, is called a um, nonlinear term. So everything here is a nonlinear term, making this a nonlinear equation. And these, in general, are pretty difficult to study. But we do have some powerful tools at our disposal that I'm going to introduce you to in the next 15 minutes or so. So our study is going to go through the following steps. First, we're going to identify the equilibrium points of this system. We briefly discussed this concept in the past, but I'll remind you how that works. Then we're going to draw a phase portrait with software. Now, ultimately, my goal is to teach you how to do this even without software. But uh, in practice, it's good to also know how to use software and be able to do things without software through your understanding. So uh, both are important. But I will show you how to use software for this. And uh, we're going to label the equilibrium points. And we're going to use the mathematical technique called linearization. And that's what's going to allow us to analyze the system near the equilibrium points. Now, if this all sounds pretty confusing or nonsensical to you, it's, it should all come together in the example when we do all these one step at a time. In the end, we're going to solve our linearizations and we'll be able to draw some pretty fascinating conclusions about this system of equations using those linearizations. So let's proceed with the first step, identifying the equilibrium points. The first thing that we do to find equilibrium points, first of all, let's recall that our function x is a function of time, and y is also a function of time. So what does it mean for a solution to be an equilibrium solution? Well, you might recall it means that x and y are both constants. So constant solution and equilibrium solution are synonymous. And um, if x is a constant and y is a constant, then that would mean that their derivative with respect to time is zero, the derivative of a constant being zero. So if x prime is zero and y prime is zero, then we know that the left-hand side of these equations are zero and therefore the right-hand side is zero. And that is how we find equilibrium points. So with the left-hand sides being zero, the right-hand sides are also zero. And we have this system of two equations in the two unknowns, x and y. Now, in general, we, um, you can't always solve even this system of algebraic equations by hand. So it's nice to be able to use a computer. So uh, here's code that I, that I used in uh, the program Mathematica by uh, Wolfram Research. And uh, I type solve, I specify the system of equations that I want to solve, and I specify the variables that I want to solve for. And I obtained, in this example, four equilibrium points. And those are negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1, and 2, 0. So I wrote them down here. 
recall that the next thing we were going to do is uh, use software to draw the phase portrait and we were going to label those equilibrium points on the picture. So I suggest you shield your eyes. Here comes a big picture. So what do we see here? Um, first of all, um, if you ignore the blue curves for a moment, um, what we have below them are, uh, a vec are vectors in a vector field. And these vectors are just specified by their, their horizontal component is given by x squared minus 3xy minus 4, and their vertical component is xy plus y squared. So there, um, and this vector field uh, specifies the direction that our solutions must travel. And so the next thing I did is I um, plotted a whole bunch of solutions to this system of equations. Uh, and those solutions uh, travel parallel to the vector field because, as I said, the vector field specifies the direction. Actually, they spe it specifies the velocity, so it actually specifies the direction and speed of our solutions. Um, and I actually did not generate this with Mathematica, but uh, with, with P-Plane, uh, which is a program I have available on my website. Um, proper credits given to the uh, Rice University professor who created it on the video description. Really nifty piece of software. All you do is you type in the uh, dif differential equations you want to analyze, and then you click uh, on the resulting vector field to specify initial conditions. So I clicked here, I clicked here, I clicked here, and it would just draw a solution curve going through that point. So when I, it, when I clicked in enough places, I got this picture. And this picture basically tells us how solutions behave uh, in response to any given initial conditions. And notice that I've also uh, identified our equilibrium points as little black points. Uh, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1, and 2, 0. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to discuss how to, uh, how to uh, figure out what these look like even without using the software P-Plane. Because it's important for you to understand why the picture looks the way it does or else you're just, um, uh, or else you're just helplessly relying on your software, which is not a good position uh, for any applied mathematician to be in. So uh, we, um, to understand this picture, we're going to use linearization. Uh, in, in particular, we're going to focus on this point, negative 1, 1, which I have now drawn a circle around to indicate that we're going to zoom in on that point. So we're going to imagine that we take a magnifying glass and we zoom in uh, around this point, negative 1, 1, right here. So here's the picture zoomed out, and here's the picture zoomed in. Uh, and what I'm going to do now that I've zoomed in is I'm going to put down a vertical axis and a horizontal axis, and I'm going to label them U and V. And uh, this is a new coordinate system that I've centered at my equilibrium point. And we're going to study this system of equations near this point. And the technique for doing that is called linearization. Let me show you. So when you take the, uh, when, you, when you have a nonlinear system and you zoom in on an equilibrium point, you can actually turn it into a linear system near that point. I'm going to explain in my next, in my next lecture where this linearization came from. So right now this, this ought to still be mysterious to you where this came from, and that's okay. Um, but suffice it to say, there's a formula that allows us to transform a nonlinear system into a linear system when we zoom in on an equilibrium point. However, this, uh, the way this formula works is um, it's a new system of equations in our new variables u and v uh, in, this, in this new set of coordinate axes that we've plopped down on our equilibrium point, which you'll recall came from here. Now, the good news is we know how to solve this equation because it's a linear 
system of ordinary differential equations in the variables u of t and v of t. So let's recall how we're going to solve that. First of all, we write it in vector matrix form. So uh, uh, you, uh, the bold-faced letter u represents the vector u comma v. And uh, we represent the coefficients as a matrix, as we've always done for solving linear systems of differential equations. And then we will find solutions of the form e to the lambda t times a constant vector w. I want you to also recall how we find lambda and w. Uh, they have to satisfy the Eigen problem, which means that lambda 1 and lambda 2 have to be solutions to determinant a minus lambda i equals 0. Here are the solutions to that. And w1 and w2 have to be the null spaces of those two matrices, so a minus lambda 1i and a minus lambda 2i. And uh, we discussed in the linear algebra segment how to do this by hand as well as how to do this by computer. I just used my computer to find these null spaces. Um, I found, so I did find a vector in the first null space and a second, uh, and a vector in the second null space. Here they are. And therefore my solutions are um, any linear combination of u1 and u2 where u1 is the first solution using lambda 1 and w1, and u2 is e to the lambda 2 t w2, which I've written out here in full. Now, this is admittedly pretty ugly with all these square roots. Um, it's kind of hard to read, so it's uh, desirable in a lot of cases to write this in decimal form, which I've done. So this is our actual uh, general solution uh, where I've rounded to uh, three decimal places. And if we plot these two vectors, negative 6.46, 1, and 0 0.464, comma, 1, uh, those two vectors are, um, well, the, uh, this first one is the purple vector, and this second one is the green vector. And since the green vector is associated with the positive eigenvalue, uh, solutions, these parametric curves will uh, depart in, along the direction of the green vector, whereas the, um, the solutions will approach the origin along the direction of the purple vector. And as is always the case when we have a positive eigenvalue, lambda 2, and a negative eigenvalue, lambda 1, which in this case were 1.46 and negative 5.46, when we have a positive and a negative eigenvalue, we always have a saddle point where we have these solutions that look like hyperbolae um, approaching two asymptotes that are parallel to our eigenvectors. So this is the local picture. We've, just, we've solved the linearization and visualized our solution. And now what we want to do is put this into our global picture. And so you see actually that um, when by solving the linearization, what we actually did is we figured out how solutions look very close to this equilibrium point. And then in principle, what you can do is you can repeat this procedure for all the equilibrium points in your, um, in your system and once you've, once you've done this analysis for all your equilibrium points, it's often possible to put your solutions together like puzzle pieces and put together the general picture, which, by the way, is extremely rewarding when you can do it right. So the only thing that really remains to discuss about this topic is the linearization formula, because I never explained to you in this video how I went from this nonlinear system of equations to this local linear system in the variables u and v. That's going to require the linearization formula, uh, which uh, might look kind of intimidating when you first see it, but you'll find, um, especially if you have a computer at your disposal, it's not too hard at all to apply. Actually, it's a lot of fun. See you next time.